Okay, so here we are. And it looks like we're starting with Liz. Yes, uh, so there are uh, state and local governments that are like, please give us some money. We uh, need help. Uh, we need to secure our systems. And uh, especially some of these cities like Atlanta have just been getting hammered on. Oh, they have actual proof that they're getting attacked? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's been in the news even um, recently that they that they have um, dealt with all kind of attacks and stuff. So they're like, please, you know, uh, give us some money so that we can actually uh, upgrade our systems and educate our people um, because, uh, you know, ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. So uh, I just thought this was pretty interesting that even right now with everything else going on, you know, usually the stuff gets shoved to the back burner in a crisis, but they're like, no, uh, even during April, they were, they came together and said, hey, we really need some um, funds to help us um, mitigate these attacks. So I thought that was interesting. Well, it's fishing and ransomware mostly, I guess. I mean, what are they going to do? What could you buy that would help? Uh, <laughs> well, well completely out of date. Well, new no equipment. They want to. Um, they want to. Uh, hopefully, they could buy better slogans because they said, you know, we went from a computer from a, a computer virus to a human virus, and uh, and they they thought they were focusing on the right thing, but that was a time when we ended up getting hit worse instead. So they're asking to, you know, ha do things that seem reasonable, like have a reasonably sized IT department. Um, for example, I know uh, Indiana oh. is cobbling together, like, I don't know, five or 10 of their critical state systems on an old IBM mainframe, and they have like six or seven guys working cool. on it on it for the whole state and it's just not enough so yeah, that's not good. yes cobol sam yeah so, so, well i don't know i it's hard to imagine anybody putting out money for that at this moment when there's another crisis to well, so, it, it, it's a problem because uh you know they're ending up getting their systems locked up at crucial times and uh especially for stuff like unemployment and things like that they're like please let us hire one guy that knows cobol you know well now, now you're talking much more sense all right. Uh -huh. so all right and right this port scanning stuff that you and that Irvin and Caitlin were talking about let's hear about yep. this so uh, according to this it eBay is doing a port scanning on uh, any Windows boxes that connect to them to mostly things like VNC team viewer that kind of stuff and does anybody understand why yes Okay. Yeah. So, so there's two articles, Sam. My article it, it, is this person absolutely enraged. Why is eBay scanning my machine? And they're doing it through the web browser, which I think is pretty cool. But, you know, e eBay is like... How do you do it through the web browser? You, uh -huh. Well, you can, you can make like uh, asynchronous like XML requests and stuff through the web browser on any well, port. Well, that is HTTP requests instead of just SIM packets. I'm, JavaScript apparently is... is powerful enough to do port scanning, believe it or not, which is really cool in and of, it, in and of itself. Right. Well, right. I, I uh, think according to the, uh, the web application hacking handbook, you can do that, but you cannot send like just a SIN. You have to send an HTTP request yeah. and an HTTP response. So a lot of services won't actually respond to it and you don't get a clear answer. But anyway. Um, so the mysteries of how this works is beyond my comprehension right now um but um uh, and, and I'm, I'm sorry about taking away your article Irvin, but this is so everyone everyone was was freaking out about oh my god this is this is the the worst thing ever like why are they doing this it turns out the reason why they're doing this is because uh, VNC and TeamViewer and stuff like that are being used to basically hijack people's accounts and they want and eBay wants to make sure that the people oh. using eBay are not using it through like VNC. Oh. Now, this, this is only working on Windows right now. Well, that um, would make that, sense. Okay. Yeah, but that's their, that is their logic is let's hope, let's see that, that this person is actually surfing on our website and isn't, isn't uh, taken over by something else. Oh, is that to combat sniping on auctions or what? Uh, fraudsters. Yeah, just fraudsters. Yeah, but taking over other people's machines, that's actually a pretty good idea. It's not that different than the one we did last time where Apple wants to check scripts to see if they're malicious 
or the Windows 10 thing where all the URLs go to Microsoft to see if they're malicious. That's kind of a good idea. Right. This came if there's a, on the heels thing. of that. Yeah, to see if there's something suspicious about your transaction, that's not too different than credit card companies that try to detect if you the location where you are and your GPS doesn't match where the payment's really coming in. That means it's fraud, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. It, might, it, it doesn't sound that harmful, although some people might feel spied on. Well, I mean, that's, that's the thing. In, in security, you have to balance the, right. the, it, the it various implications. Right. There's, nothing that, that, there's, no, uh, say, there's nothing that pops up that says, hey, we're scanning you. Yeah, yeah. It's happening. Yeah. All right. And then there's steganography. Yep. Good. So I think this is probably one of the worst types of steganography you could possibly do. Yeah. Um, essentially, what you're doing is you're using Unicode characters that are non-printable to encode yeah. messages within text. So you have a, a normal set of of text, and then in between you'll have like characters that aren't printed, and yep. you can use that to like encode messages yourself. Yep, so it's not that different to me than just putting comments in the source code. Exactly, it's pretty much the same thing. A bit more obfuscated, but yeah. you know, it's just a thing to be aware of that that is a thing. And I mean, it's it, like I said, it's hard to hide if you're looking at the, the Unicode itself, you'll notice something's there. And not like, you know, image steganography, which can be much more difficult to detect. I remember like 10 years ago, they wrote a, a steganography tool that would hide your message in spam. And then it would send you an email full of statements about Viagra and stuff. And there are patterns in that. And so after that, it got popular. So I did a CTF. And when you join the CTF server, they will send you one of these and your spam filter throws it away. And finding where the damn message is, is the first problem. Anyway. <laughs> That's like, that's like when Sophos gave me a free iPad. And then they sent me this email saying, you want a free iPad. And of course, the spam filter threw them away. And they said, dude, we're giving you a free iPad. Why aren't you answering your messages? And I said, yeah, sure, you're giving me a free iPad. I replied, sure. Then mail it to here. Mail it to college. Let's see what happens. And then they actually sent me one. And they said, send us a picture of you with the iPad. So I did. And then they didn't use that. They said, we're hoping someone less ugly would get the damn iPad. <laughs> anyway, um, so I gave it to a student. Some student got a free iPad. So anyway. Anyway, uh, all right, so I, I had nothing but politics. So I grouped them together to try to make some sense. But the first thing that I thought is interesting is all these people that are um, trying to make apps to monitor your health. And I think I saw one where the Indian app got hacked. There's an Indian app that like turns green and you have to get on, can only get on buses and the guy figured out how to hack it, either an Indian or Chinese app, which is very easy to just hack. But these guys want to make a permanent health tracking app that's going to keep track of your drinking and exercise and other things, just like the other social uh, value app they have in China. And um, so that'll be fun. And then an obvious hack is to like hack it so you have a higher social value because it affects your jobs and your ability to get on buses and everything. So uh, this is an interesting idea. Of course, it's uh, sort of big brother and scary. But on the other hand, I mean, Trump is screaming and yelling that China doesn't do enough to, to stop viruses. And here they are doing something. And uh, this I thought was impressive because the total amount of tests of all kinds given in America is 14 million. Antibody tests and live infection. And here's Wuhan doing 7 million tests in nine days. They had a few more cases there. So they tested like 80% of the population in just a week or so. But this is awesome. And, you know, it shows it's spectacular. When I went to Sri Lanka, I said, you know, people say America is falling in importance and China is taking over. And he said, I think that happened years ago. It's already happening. China is the superpower that controls the world and America is way behind. And we're certainly falling behind very fast, according to many measures. So it's um, China's way ahead. And that, you know, China is saying, I think quite fairly, it's, there used to be a time when the U.S. was important in the international community, but now we're just a lunatic nation, sort of like North Korea, where everybody laughs at us and ignores us. And China has adults that say reasonable things, saying, why don't you just stop picking on China and focus on curing the disease in your own country and, like, knock it off, which is very reasonable. China seems to be the adult in the room. And, I wonder know, why we're a joke in the international community. How could that possibly be? Well, it's because of democracy, I'm afraid. And China's totalitarian rule is selecting better leaders at the moment. Um, anyway, um, and so Qatar also wants to make a mandatory app. And uh, all these, many nations are making these apps and they don't seem to work worth a damn because Bluetooth isn't designed for this. But anyway, it's, uh, it's becoming quite popular to evaluate your health through an app. 
I wonder if we're going to have new technologies built into phones specifically for uh, determining like device devices nearby yeah. for this kind of stuff. Well, we, we saw that, I think last time, there were, nursing homes now make you wear a thing with a special new Bluetooth thing, a new device, not a cell phone, but a different device mm -hmm. to again, track who you've been near. Mm -hmm. So uh, putting it in phones, you could probably sell more phones by adding that feature. It'd be a desirable oh. feature. The phone How could that possibly go wrong? Right? Well, we'll, we'll see in, a, in my next article. Oh yeah. And, and this DNS attack, which is actually quite interesting. It is interesting. So this was, was big news this week. Um, yeah. an old, it's, it's kind of old technology, uh, but new attack. So um, it's, it's, I thought it was a pretty good, um, I thought this was a pretty good article to post for the week. Yeah, because I, the thing I like about it is it doesn't require on a flaw in the, it's just using it as designed. So you yeah. can make um, referral records go ask this other server and you can put a bunch of them in there. So when someone makes a request to your server, it goes, makes hundreds of requests to some poor victim server. Right. And uh, this was big too, just because, I mean, it, it affected uh, Google, Microsoft, Cloudflare, Amazon, yeah. Oracle, ICANN, um, ISC bind, all of these. And uh, some, only some of them have been patched about uh, two thirds of them have been patched so far, but uh you know, you need to make sure that you're, um, you need to make sure you're, you're, uh, everything's patched and updated and. Yeah. And they have a new protocol, max one fetch, which is interesting to me, which is a alteration in how DNS works so that it won't make multiple requests to the same server in response to one, which is a pretty smart idea. And that's, that's a, that's not, you know, a bug being fixed. It's, the functionality of the core being altered. It yeah. reminds me of Cloudflare's uh, um, rapid, Speedy, the new yes. rapid way to load web pages, a different yeah. protocol. Anyway. A lot, of, a lot of folks were surprised uh, when this, the DDoS actually worked because you know we kind of figured we'd um, compensate it again and mitigate it against that threat, but uh, it's, it's you know, finding, new, finding new holes every day. Yeah, yeah, but this is an important hole like the one Dan Kaminsky found in 2008. This is a hole not in a defect in one product, but a fundamental design flaw in DNS itself. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, good. And then we got Blue Mockingbird. What's the deal with this? So, Urban, this is one of yours? Yeah. Uh, another another uh, gang out there. Uh, creating malware and and hitting hitting a bunch of systems, exploiting a, a semi old vulnerability from last year. Juicy potato. All right, what's juicy potato? <laughs> the golden privileges. Yes, golden privileges to a uh, system. Oh, the bits service. Yeah. And. Juicy potato. Privilege escalation from service to system. Okay, is this uh, using a golden ticket or something? Yeah, yeah. Listening port com. Create process with token. Yeah, I just wonder what the fundamental flaw is. Um, and it's not very obvious. Okay, a dot net deserialization vulnerability. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Right, it's exploitable key. when the encryption keys are known. Oh. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Because I mean, the old serialization would just stick things together like zip. Then everybody switched to encrypted or signed serialization. But if they don't store the keys somewhere safe, then you can decrypt it and exploit it. That sounds like a fun one to set up. Yeah. Might want to make a project out of that one. Juicy Potato, I like the name. <laughs> the date just don't have a logo. Yeah, they don't have a logo, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, they got to have a logo and t-shirts and stuff. But anyway, um, so NSA's tool to map your social network. So, of course, the NSA is mapping everything you do uh, on social networking. No, uh, I, you know, I, I kid you not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and this goes into details about how it works. Um, they basically store all your social media posts in a giant NSA database, just like your HTTPS traffic. 
And the tool they use is called Mainway. And basically what they do is they use, um, they're looking specifically for metadata within, um, within the, your social media posts and then do all kinds of graph theory to figure out who you're connected to, who you're contacting, what, what you're interested in, you know, how is that, how's that interest aligned with people that they're, that the NSA wants to investigate that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. Now you say everybody can be blackmailed with something, you know, that's why I like uh, David Letterman, right? They found out he was sleeping with the staff. So he went on the show and said, yep, I was sleeping with the staff. I'm not going to let anybody blackmail me. Go ahead. Come at me. <laughs> I, that's what you do. I mean, they find, I'd like to imagine that if people dug up stuff from my past. I would have the guts to just do the same thing. Yeah. I did that thing. Now you can hate me if you want, but let's get over it, you know? <laughs> well, I guess we'll That's see. the thing to do. Yeah. Much more, it's a much more effective defense than denial. Well, you know, you can't hide it forever, so let's just take the lumps and move on. <laughs> uh, right, and everybody's history is easily dug up. I would think so. This is why we have statute of limitations, hopefully. There should be a time when you no longer have to worry about the dirt from your past, as long as it's not too horrible. No, now it's like the dirt is coming out in real time and the consequences too. I think about that lady uh, who was walking her dog in Central Park and called the cops on a guy for oh, being- yeah. and, uh, and she boy, that, got fired or something. like real time. She's already out of the job. I mean- yeah, See, that's and, cultural culture. It is, but it's, I, I think that we're experiencing a shift right now where, you know, in, in the past that might have not come up till 20 years later when she was like running for public office or something. Well, yeah. And I think, um, yeah, absolutely. And in many ways it, it, it does help if, if things are exposed right away and then there's time to, to move on from it. Like, for example, like uh, with um, Biden's accusations of, of uh, sexual assault. Yeah. If this had come out 20 years ago and we knew about it and he was like either completely denied it then and there was no proof or, or admitted that, oh, yeah, I, I, he, you know, sexually assaulted somebody and that he was going to make amends, you know, now we wouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah. Um, so there, there is some benefit to the whole, you know, figuring out that, that somebody did something bad now and then making atoning for your mistakes right away. Mm -hmm. I remember about 15 years ago when Facebook and Twitter and everything came out and people said, this is going to be the end of privacy and everybody will just get over this idea that you have any private part of your life. And that hasn't happened, but maybe it will happen. I thought that would be a good thing at the time. If people no longer have to pretend that they're pure and virtuous, but everybody has to admit that they have a dark side and everybody gets over freaking out about it. I don't know. Anyway, um, Right, so I, this one, I, the um, people are concerned about the election. One of my friends is very concerned that Trump is going to refuse to leave office and claim that and cancel the election and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, maybe that's so. They're certainly trying hard to rig the election by halting vote by mail and forcing people to vote in person. And in Wisconsin, they also closed all the physical polling places. So people had to go to five places in the whole state to try to make it as difficult as possible to vote. And that's, that's an interesting issue because this is the fundamental premise of America. We are not a democracy. We're not a direct democracy. We have systems to prevent minorities from losing power and now they've been exploited. So a minority has taken power and you can't get them out because we don't have a direct election. It's, it's, um, it's an interesting issue. What kind of place do we want to be? And the Republicans are not out of line by saying only rich people should vote and the poor people should just shut up and take it because that was the original plan for America. We never intended for poor people to vote. It's, it's, uh, it's a big issue of what we want to be. And uh, anyway, so Trump is already trying to set up complaints about the rigged election so that if he loses, he can claim it was invalid. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, told, I've blithely told people, oh, I don't think even the Republicans would just let him cling to power, declare himself a king, and cancel the election. But I don't know. I'm not so sure of that as I used to be. And a lot of people are less sure. So we'll see how much of a constitutional crisis is coming. But if, if Trump doesn't win, there may be quite a battle. Anyway, um, so I thought it was- that's, that's if he chooses not to, to office squat. Not choose to what? 
office squats. That's yeah, a great term. To office office squat. Right. That's right. Well, I mean, that's the issue. Is he going to uh, actually let go of power just because of an election? And that's not clear. And he didn't agree before when he was running against Hillary that he would accept the results of the election if he didn't win. So that's why they might, there was a, the previous election with Al Gore that went all the way to the Supreme Court. And he, um, you know, gave up saying, I don't want the battle to split the country. And I think they're quite correct that we cannot expect that kind of action out of Trump. He will, no. he will keep clinging to it and demanding it far beyond any point of like uh, good reason. I mean, you'd think that you'd think that uh, he would just want to go back to playing golf, uh, but it's just too uh, lucrative to be president and abuse your power. Uh, well, something about it he likes. I don't know if, if it's just the money, but certainly he likes it. I think he likes the fame and the power. I think what he mostly wants is the applause. He spends his time watching yeah. TV and he wants to see himself on TV and people saying nice things about him. That seems to be what motivates him. But I'm very unclear yeah. on what motivates him. He's a very strange person. It is mind blowing to me how he, within the last, you know, within just the last few months of 2019, decided that Fox News was uh, not sufficiently um, toadying to yeah. his um, regime and, and got another news network going that's even more. Uh, even more pro-Trump than Fox was, which they were pretty darn pro-Trump to begin yeah. with. Well, you know, this like, he, that's what was scary about him when he first got in. He has the ego of like a Saddam Hussein or something, where he just expects everyone to praise him, but he isn't bloodthirsty. He isn't killing people or starting wars, but he is indirectly with this coronavirus. But I mean, he's not the typical tyrant that just executes all his critics. He mostly he just does, wants them to he stop. Does remind, them he does remind me of like a... Um, he does remind me of like a, a, a dictator because who wants state run media that, that only says nice things about the head of state. Yeah, and I think, I mean, his, his personality is as terrible as the worst dictators in history, but his pettiness is so extreme that it limits the harm he does. Right. It's like, anyway, but we'll see where it goes. This is um, more about that later. I'm very interested in politics. I'll be teaching a class in the next semester if they actually let students enroll and don't cancel it, which is not clear yet. But anyway, so here we got uh, iPhone hackers got iOS 14. That's news to me. Yes. Uh, the, the big, the big, uh, the big news, um, of course, this week was that um, wow. uh, a, uh, a hack came out that will uh, essentially allow you to um, own any iPhone, that, all of them that are out. And... Uh, I, I, I didn't put that in there right? been all over the news, but I thought this was very interesting in that uh, they managed to um, get a, a copy of this uh, advanced release on this, um, or they managed to get a copy of this uh, uh, operating system of iOS 14 um, f way far in advance, like, like at least nine months before the um, intended release in September. And that's, that's kind of big that they were able to get it that far in advance. Oh yeah. And this might explain what the one I saw said that the exploit brokers are now not interested in buying iPhone exploits because there's so many of them now that they're devalued from which is the opposite. It used to be that it was real hard to hack the iPhone. Correct. So this seems like a serious security breach inside Apple. Uh, it is though, you know, things like this have happened in the past. Uh, I remember years ago, uh, an Apple employee had, um, I believe it was prototype hardware. Uh, it was for a new version of the iPhone that he'd taken off campus and left at a bar. And uh, then uh, he got fired over that. That was a huge deal. So, I mean, there are ways that this stuff slips out, but I, I think that, I mean, I would not be surprised if there were inside, if there were an insider threat in this case. Yeah, and I know Apple is considered to be more secretive and more effective at keeping secrets than the NSA or the military or anything. I mean, they really, really lock it down. So yeah. somebody's heads are going to roll for this. Yeah, yeah, and uh, oh man, they. I'm sure. I'm sure that that was one thing after another over this past week, and things were not going great at the mothership. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about that. And I haven't tried the Uncover Jailbreak. That's the new jailbreak. It'll be interesting if people tell me if it works, it's getting a lot of press. So, yeah, it'll be interesting.
Yeah, so there's that one. Then we got cyber hacking. Makes me think of that game, Caitlin got cyber hacker. Cyber hacker, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a question that started to come up again. Uh, is cyber hacking uh, classified as uh, terrorism? And the thing that's kind of bringing this up again is that that latest breach with Lady Gaga and, and the potential uh, stuff from Trump. That like, okay, is this, a, is this now an attack on an individual or is this an attack on the state? If it's an attack on the state, then is it classified as terrorism? And where, you know, where does the, the big, um, where does the big curve end up? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, where's the law here? I really want to know who bought the Trump data, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand how, and Madonna, Madonna just published like naked pictures of her and said, I am the queen of I don't give a fuck. So, I mean, yeah. I think, you know, I don't know what you could dump about Madonna that would bother her. I mean, same with Lady Gaga, really. Yeah, and Trump. I mean, what kind of dirt would matter to Trump? All this dirt is out there. He mostly commits crimes in public sight and brags about them. So <laughs> I don't understand how it would hurt him if you proved something, except his tax returns. He's hiding them for some reason as if it would matter. And his college grades. He doesn't want anyone seeing his college grades. <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. don't see either Fair, hurting him, even if they are just as bad as we all expect. I don't think any of his supporters would care. Right. right. And right. it's like he's got the job already. He's not gonna get uh he's not gonna he's not gonna get fired because he has some D's on his college transcript. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, um, but he is working hard to hide it for whatever reason. Yeah. So yeah. so TI is taking assembly language off their calculators, which is kind of screwy. This is oh, great. right. Why are they doing this? So TI, who makes these graphing calculators that are ridiculously expensive because they're used specifically for education. And, um, well, I mean, you left him, but I mean, the, the whole idea is that they have this like standardized calculator that, that, that people can bring on to test and then they have to keep, because it has to make these standards, it always has to use the same technology year after year. Oh. So there's that old joke where like they're the only people who can make those, those screens as terrible as you find on the TI calculators. Like, like the, they're the only people that could job over TI. <laughs> like like they, they have to use these old technologies. Anyway, um, so because this is for test taking, uh, TI decided to remove assembly programs because you could potentially use them to cheat, which is ridiculous because I never used assembly programs or C programs to cheat on my test because it's you can just program the calculator in like a, a basic like language and cheat with that. Yeah. yeah. Why go all the way? Through, why go? Why go through the trouble of making a, a? You you only use assembly and C if you're writing games for the calculator, and that's just so much fun. Yeah. Right. That's what I use that calculator for to play games. Yeah, and yeah. they're taking away that feature. Why would they do that? Well, you know, something I've 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 kind of gotten over worrying about this cheating thing. You know, because in a way, in a in hacking and and red teams, you're supposed to cheat. So I don't know. This whole idea of making people stay in the lines and obey the rules is kind of opposite to the courses I'm teaching. So. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I mean, you use it in a math class, and I don't see the problem in making programs that that do the math equations for you, because that just means you know how, to, how yes. it all works. Yes, that was, I, I remember, I, this gives me flashbacks to my uh, AP physics class, and like how much fun I had doing stuff like that, and writing mm -hmm. little, uh, writing little games for it, and how much I learned from that, and yeah. I yeah. mean... This is, uh, this is one of those things where it's like, this to me really underscores what happens when like managers and directors don't are so disconnected from their user base and from the tech that they're making the decisions on. Yeah. Well, this is why I get, you know, I try to stay away from all the rules at the college because most of the college is in this stuff where they're having, they're forcing students to take a class they don't want to take then forcing them to do homework they don't want to do and take tests they don't want to do. And I just am very much on the other side where you try to make it fun and then you don't have all that nonsense. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I mean, you know, the, it, you, you can make it so that it's much less desirable to cheat on your projects. I mean, that, that really seems to be the way to go to me. But, but we're, to be fair, we're in a field where the certifications don't mean anything. The degrees don't really mean anything. Um, but my sister like teaches nursing and there really is this, prize at the end, a certificate that really will get you a job. And, you know, it's real important that you totally stay with the rules and do just what they tell you to do. It's a different world there. Anyway, 
Um, I'm glad I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Well, I'm pretty sure mathematics is kind of adjacent to what we do. And I don't think there's any, any mathematician certification that you can get to prove that you know how to do math. Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know why you're using a calculator on a math test anyway. I never did. The whole point of math is to do it the other way, I would think. I think, I think you're, if you've taken like vector calculus, yeah, then you know why you need a calculator. Well, I did that. We didn't use a calculator. Complex okay. variables. I mean, of course, I, I took it back in the dark. Not complex variables. No, like, uh, like vector fields. Sure, that's fine. Well, okay, I, I didn't use a calculator for any of that either. Oh, okay. Well, but, you know, I came, I grew up like, you know, before they invented this fancy stuff like al abacuses and rocks and calculators and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was going to ask if you added a I do, but, you know. I remember uh, my, my, one of my students told me about, you know, Gauss, where at that time math was they would give you problems to solve with a chalk on a slate. And if you got them wrong, they would hit you with a stick. You know, that was the kind of education I grew up with. So. I mean, what, what would you do if you're like you're solving a large matrix and like you just got one of the numbers wrong? Like, how would you know you got one of the numbers wrong? How would you hit you with that? a stick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite effective. Anyway, uh, so... Anyway, so uh, this one I thought is more political stuff. Just amazing. Not only did most of the money supposedly to bail out small business and people go to huge corporations like banks that just put, put it in their, their uh, executive bonus and split, now people are not even bothering to claim the money because it's so unclear what the rules are. They're making people give it back. They made it so you have to spend 75% of it on salaries of employees, but people are just firing the employees and not taking the money because no one knows when this is going to end. And what they really need is money to pay the rent and you aren't allowed to use it to pay the rent. So it's just sitting there. In fact, the current uh, rate of expenditure of this money of distribution is now negative. More companies are returning the money that took it earlier than new people are applying to get it. The fund is actually growing. So this is just, again, like the testing issue, this is a spectacular failure. The, the Trump administration has incompetence like beyond the theoretical limit to where they're trying to give away money and they can't even do that. That's also awesome for banks because they get the use of the money this whole time. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Maybe yeah. that was in the plan in, in the beginning. Yeah. And so anyway, the other thing which is amazing is this one. This guy, and apparently a top up economist and from Harvard, is saying that he expects a huge economic boom that's going to put Trump back in office. He thinks that there's going to be the best economic data ever very soon. So. I don't quite understand his argument, but anyway, I think this is what Trump says, all these pent-up demands. He thinks there'll be a rapid recovery, and by the time of the election, there'll be record stock markets again. And in that case, I think Trump will definitely get in. Because I think that is the only thing Republicans really care about, is the stock market. He's so He's going to push the stuff right up until the election, and we're going to see a boost right before the election so that... And, you know, actually having this, ter being at the terrible state that we're at now is only going to make the uh, comeback look e so much better. And then once he, once he gets reelected again, then it, it, it won't matter. He'll just go back to lining his own pockets. Yeah, well, that's why, you know, I hear a lot of Democratic strategists trying to figure out who to make for Joe Biden's running mate and how to, like, cover up the fact that he's sort of uh, clumsy and incompetent himself. Um, and, and I think it's all garbage. I think the only thing that matters is the virus. If there's another surge of the virus in the fall, Trump will lose. And yeah. if there isn't, then Trump will win. I think that's all it is out of anybody's hands. It just depends on the uh, pandemic bacteriological arrangement, the medical virus, because the 1918 flu came back twice as bad in the fall. And if this right. one does that, that'll be curtains for Trump. And what? if it doesn't, then he'll be a hero saying, see, I told you we could just ignore it and it would just go away. And that was true. Mm -hmm. Gambling on that. Why do you think that it will be curtains for Trump, though? Because, it, you know, because the stock market at, will fall again. And that's what really matters. I mean, I've heard for years that political scientists say that all that matters is two months before the election, whether your personal disposable income goes up or down. If people feel richer, then they support the president. And if they feel poorer, then they don't support the president. The thing is, though, they're still supporting him through the shit show that we have now. So I'm, I don't, I, I, I don't have as much faith in the voters, unfortunately. Even if, even if there is a huge, um, even if there is a huge. Uh, well, 
You do remind me of one of the fundamental principles, which is if you ever feel like you're too cynical, that's because you're not cynical enough. So um, here I am thinking that you're too cynical, but then I feel like I should never say that. You think the stock market would crash and the virus would kill another 200,000 and they'd still put Trump back in. I'm not that I, cynical yet. <laughs> Maybe I, <he'd> <laughs> I, th I think he'd have a good ch chance of winning. Yeah, I mean, we thought we never thought that he would be elected in the first place. I oh, certainly here. didn't. Or or keep office throughout. Or that he would let a hundred thousand Americans die, and people would still tell him say that he's doing a great job, which is the case. They're like, oh well, he didn't know it was bad. There was no way to tell. Well, I mean, the fundamental principle of America is you can't fool all the people all the time. So I guess we're testing that principle. You know, I, I saw this, this old um, uh, image that someone posted on Facebook, a political uh, like meme uh, from a conservative who said, uh, you know, I, I survived four years of, uh, I survived eight years of your president, meaning Obama. Yeah. You can survive, you know, you know, my president. And that has aged very poorly. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll, see. well, anyway. I know Irvin's got a split. Are there I any do. comments about this stuff? It is aged like old milk. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Well, I'll stop the recording.